Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by Plants. Plants. Today, we bring to you episode 278, Shopping Tips for the Holidays. In today's episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we're going to skip the introduction since it's just the two of us and we're going to get right into the core of it. But before we do, we wanted to tell you about a super duper surprise we have coming your way this Black Friday. We really can't give you any of the details until then, but we can tell you that we've bundled up with some amazing people in the plant-based vegan and health communities. So if you're listening on November 20th, 21st, or 22nd, It's still going to be a secret and you'll have to remember to check our social media or the show notes at planttrainers.com on Friday. Black Friday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern is when we're going to be sending out a newsletter to all of you with all of the juicy details about who we've partnered with, all the nutrition, cooking, and fitness and lifestyle books, courses, videos, and everything that you could be able to purchase at a great, great discounted price. If you haven't yet joined our newsletter, though, you can go to planttrainers.com and sign up there or click the link in the show notes now. If you're listening to this November 23rd through 27th, Go ahead and click the link in the show notes, check out Plant Trainers on Facebook or Instagram, and you can get all the details now before it's too late. And trust us, you're not going to want to miss out on this one. And now for a moment of gratitude. I'm grateful for mentors. I think that they're very important in everyone's life, and sometimes they could be somebody very close to you. Sometimes it could be somebody who you've never even met or spoken to directly before. But when you have a mentor and you have good role models, things just seem a little bit easier. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the reminder of having everything that I need to have. And I know we're talking about shopping today and having the great fortune of being able to afford things and buy certain things and go shopping. Not everybody has that opportunity. And I'm grateful to be able to do that. So I think it's kind of crazy that Adam and I are here talking to you about shopping today, mostly because we're smart shoppers, but not big shoppers. We were just talking to a friend who dropped $7,000 $7,000 on a purse. Completely insane. <laughs> and, um, you know, ha- has all these other purchases. Not and that we judge anybody. We, we don't judge, but for us in our own life, we just can't imagine dropping that kind of money on something that sits on your shoulder. But some people, they like that and they get that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to come at it like we kind of do with nutrition and, and lifestyle, meeting you where you are and giving our tips of what works for us because although we do shop, we do like good quality things, things that are going to last long, things that are a little bit more sustainable, things that are a little bit better for the environment. But we've never been the ones to throw our money away just because an opportunity to spend it is there. We're very careful with our money and we're reaping the benefits from that in terms of travel, in terms of what we can give our children, because that's the way that we've lived. Of course, what we will do is we're not going to make this into a huge infomercial or anything like that. But at the end, we will mention some specific products that we do like. But in the meantime, we're just going to do a little bit of talking around shopping. I think that this episode is coming out in a timely space because tomorrow's Black Friday, Cyber Monday's around the corner. And Most of us are preparing for the Christmas holidays and starting to buy family gifts and friends gifts. And so we wanted to just talk about some shopping tips that might be able to help so many people become a little bit smarter with how they spend their money. And not that we're telling you how or where to spend your money, but just some tips on ways to find the products or use certain things and do your shopping in a way that might be a little more efficient or cost effective for you and your family. So I think it's really important to start thinking about why it is that we shop and do we need all the things that we're buying? Because this is a time where things go on sale, right? We have 
We have Black Friday, there's Cyber Monday, there's all these Christmas specials, all of a sudden the malls are open so much later, Amazon goes crazy, what, whatever it is. Um, I, I think that's that's the craziest part. Like you, you're online all the time and you start to get these pop-ups or these things coming into your feed that are trying to get you to buy their products. And a lot of the time, people get caught up with that and there's a lot of impulse purchases that happen when we don't really need all the things that we're buying but it's so much fun to click the purchase button for it certain is fun items. but we've talked about this in terms of emotional eating before and it's really fun to have that bag of chips or have that donut we're feeling happy we celebrate with cake you know we're, we're feeling sad and we try to make up for it with a tub of ice cream you know we see it on tv all the time and i think shopping works uh, for sure the, there's the definitely way. emotional shopping that goes on and we need to tune into that to see that yeah, maybe that's something that people are doing and need to recognize that and say, well, I'm not going to click purchase. I'm not going to buy now. I'm actually going to think about this for a few minutes. Yeah. Do I really need that frog with the googly eyes that ribbits every three hours because it's the same color of the brand of the company that I work for? You know, is that necessary? Is that a, the best use of your money? Uh, what's Where's that plastic going to go when you decide that you don't want it anymore? Was it a little child in in you know, a third world country that that made it and it's being exploited, you know, try to think about where these products are coming from, what they're actually going to add to your life, and if it's necessary, because if you can cut back on $10, $15 a month on some of these unnecessary purchases, after a whole year, what can you buy with that? Or after five years, what vacation can you go on, right? There, if you start to break it down and think about it, instead of doing all this impulse shopping, where else can you use that money? Is that $5 better spent on the frog with the poppy eyes? Or, you know, can I give it to a charity? And again, we're not trying to get people to not spend their money, not buy their gifts. And what I think what we're trying to say is we want people to become more conscious as they spend their money. And we want people to become conscious consumers. So where is your money going? And is it going to a place that is really necessary for you, your family, and the people that are taking your money. And is it going to bring value into your life? Or if you're buying it for somebody, is it going to bring value into their life? I love my parents. They're amazing. They buy our children all kinds of things. But sometimes they don't need all those kinds of things. Most times. You know, like, yes, my daughter, absolutely. Get her a sketchbook. Get her new... Get her new crayons to go, uh, markers to go with it or crayons or, or pencils or what have you. But like all the little plastic shenanigan things that get broken and left in the house like after five days, that's not necessarily necessary. Right. Necessary. Um, so think about it. Think about the impact that it could make. And I think a lot of us have shopping habits that may come from our parents as well. I remember being a young child. We had like a, a weekend house, a vacation house in the United States. Of course, we lived in Canada. And we would go down to these stores like Ames and Woolworths and, and all of these stores that were so cheap. You know, the, the dollar wasn't what it was today. It was a, much more on par. And, you know, you could get a t-shirt for $2. You could get running shoes for $7. All of these crazy prices. So we'd go down and we would just shop, 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 shop. And then when I became more independent, I, I was kind of doing the same. And I was like, well, wait, my friends are going away to Cuba or Cancun or wherever it is, you know, in a couple of months, if I'm going to buy all these other things, then I won't be able to go. And I and so I had to kind of break free of the habits that I created as a child. And of course, you don't want kids to live in, you know, in the moment of scarcity, right? You don't want them to think that they never have enough and that they should always save their money. You need to find a good balance for yourself and for your children so that you could just be happy and have the things that you need and some of the things that you want. And I think part of that conscious consumer aspect is that knowing what you need and what you want and that there's a clear difference between what you want and what you need. And just because you want certain items of clothing doesn't mean you need it because when you go back and look into your closet and you see that you have 50 of those same items, you just wanted something new, you might want to rethink that or you might want to take those items that you already have and give them away to someone in need so that you could then replace it with the newer version that you're interested in. 
So now we're getting more into the minimalism idea that we've talked about a lot on the show before. I think we said two Februarys ago, we had gotten rid of, you know, one thing a day, each of us on the first day of February and two things a day, each of us on the second day of February and so on. So we ended up getting rid of, but I did it for myself for the house and Adam did it for himself too. So we ended up getting rid of over a thousand things. And when you say get rid of, we actually, we donated it. To... Some went in the garbage or recycling. Right. Most went to donation. Some things got sold. And then what we kind of started doing from there is, you know, if we were buying a new shirt, we would find a shirt in our closet that we really didn't wear or need anymore. And we would pass that on or you know you have you have your favorite pair of socks and underwear and all those things that like you never want to part with but you know we just part with it part with it now or that t-shirt with holes in it yeah or those sweatpants with holes at the feet like it's sometimes it's time to give those up yeah take a picture and you know take a picture and give it up because when you have all of these things around you it doesn't necessarily make you feel better or you know, give you more, give you more in your life. Now, if you're someone who loves t-shirts, you know, then go for it. We have, we like to collect masks from every country that we go to. Do we need these masks? Are they helping us in our life? Well, you know what? We feel really happy when we look at them, when we walk down the stairs and they bring up memories from that happened on those trips that we were on. So although we don't need masks to survive, you know, that's what we collect. I think everybody has something that they like to collect. Probably. When you start to get into this minimalism thing, you you really start to think more about the purchases that you're making. We have a friend who moved for a year or two overseas and he only let him well, not he only let, but the family decided that they were going to go minimalism. So they only had five of everything, you know, in terms of socks and clothes. And they really had to think and choose what were they going to buy? What were they going to bring? So the minimalism thing can really just help you be more aware of your actions. And plus, when you buy so many things, there's so much packaging that comes with it. You know, if you're ordering something online, it's going to come in a box and that box has maybe been recycled and will hopefully be recycled again or even used in a different way again. But then there's so much plastic packaging. There's plastic balls that keep it from breaking and there is the plastic of from the company that actually packages it. And really the landfills are just blowing up you know there's so much inside them so there's so much garbage and pollution and plastic does not break down really well so thinking about those kinds of things okay so we're gonna be shopping a lot over the next few weeks most people will be but i want to share with our listeners some of the items that we've bought over the past few years that some were really awesome some were not so much so awesome and there are different ways to find them as on deals, on specials, on discounted pricing. But the bottom line is you got to really need these items if you're going to go out and get them, right? Right. So one of the purchases that we've made most recently, I think within the past year or year and a half, maybe two years, was our electric pressure cooker. And, you know, Adam was like, are you sure? Do you really need it? You cook everything on the stove. And I was like, everybody else has one and it will make some good videos. Um, you know, it'll look good on our Instagram at Plant Trainers. So let's just do it. So we did it. And it's really been one of the most amazing purchases because I did soak or I still do soak all my beans and make them all myself. And I always had the pot boiling over or had to add more water into it or couldn't get the right consistency and had to be home while I was doing that. So now it's so easy to do all of those beans. I could throw them in while I'm getting the kids off to school, go off to appointments or go off to the gym, come home and it will be ready. And I didn't have to stay home worried about safety while that was happening. You know, the same goes for chilies and soups. I'll make chilies or soups and bring them with when we're invited to people's houses or for potlucks. I'll just bring the whole pressure cooker with me. If you have a pressure cooker or an electric pressure cooker, you know how hot it gets in there. So if it's done at three o'clock and you're going to someone's house for five, six o'clock, if you don't take that lid off, it's going to be piping hot. You don't even have to plug it back in. So it's it's really incredible how that has helped our life. It yeah. has helped improve our quality of life. That pressure cooker has gotten a gold star from us. We did a podcast episode 260 with the Veggie Queen. So if you want to learn more about a pressure cooker, 
Uh, that's a great episode to listen to. So one of the other items that we purchased a while ago was our spiralizer. We got into it looks so cool. yeah, it looks cool. You could take these veggies and you could turn them into pasta and cut them into cool shapes and stuff. And we loved it and we used it for a little bit, and then it kind of took a back seat and we didn't really use it very much. And that's because. It was a bit of a pain at times to use, to take out, to clean up. Yeah, it wasn't so it easy. Yeah, cleaning it is hard. And we don't, although we do eat raw meals, we're not raw on a regular basis. So anybody who's listening who's gone through raw periods, I'm sure that your spiralizer owes you absolutely nothing. Adam's not a huge fan of the spiralized zucchini, although I do like it. I just don't make it that often because it doesn't make him that happy. I'll make it in the summer a couple of times, you know, so that's something that you would obviously need to know if it's going to improve your quality of life and help you in the kitchen. But for us, it just, it it sits there and it gets used a couple of times a year. It makes things look kind of cute and pretty, but it really doesn't get a lot of use in our house. So for us, it wasn't exactly the best purchase. Yeah. One thing that we put off for a really long time was the electric toothbrush. And our dentist had been mentioning to us and we didn't go for it. But really, I'm really, really happy with that purchase. Although we can connect it to our phones. We could see how long the kids are brushing for. But um, we don't, we do, don't do any of that. We don't do that. And that's part of the reason why I didn't want it. They said like, oh, you can do this. You can do that with it. And I'm like, I don't want extra things to do. Brushing your teeth is one of the simplest things. And I have a lot going on in my life. So if brushing my teeth is going to make my life more complicated, then I don't want that kind of toothbrush. But it really does feel cleaner. The dentist have, has given better feedback. I mean, the kids are pretty good anyway, for, and so are we. Actually, it's funny because when I started eating plant-based, they started telling me how I was flossing and how I'm doing such a great job flossing. And which you That weren't. doesn't happen yeah, very often which either. You but, you know, we are getting even better feedback um, about the plaque on our teeth and stuff like that. So we really did find that although it was a costly investment to get two, Adam and I share one. We have our own heads and the kids share one and they have their own heads also. It really has been a good investment for our family. Yeah, I think that was one of our better ones that we've done over the past few years. And while it was a little more expensive than probably buying individual little toothbrushes every month, not that I'm probably, I bet you nobody really does that, even though you're supposed to. If you fraction that over time, it actually turns out to be a good long term investment and it will last a long time. And the benefits definitely outweigh the expense, in my opinion. So that was a good one. So the the only other downfall that I'm sure some of you are thinking about already is that it's plastic and you're throwing that plastic piece out and it's not, you know, I, those wood toothbrushes look amazing. It's just not something that we've adopted yet into our family. But um, if you're not, if you're already doing the wood toothbrushes, I would definitely, you know, stick with it or the recycled toothbrushes. But if you are looking to improve your oral health, that is definitely something that we could recommend has been good for us. So a couple of technology things because tech is on the rise and more and more people are using their iPhones or their Android phones or their laptops, computers. You have on this list a wireless mouse and I'm not even sure some people even know what a mouse is anymore because most people are on laptops and very few are hooking up a wireless mouse to their laptop because they just use the trackpad. So why did you put wireless mouse on this list? Well, because we had an old school mouse on our old school desktop for a really long time and it was really, really annoying. And you heard my, I think part of the reason why I put it there is because Adam's really good at buying gifts. His gifts are usually extremely practical and extremely relevant. So he had heard me complaining for like three years. And no, then, you never well, complained. <laughs> he had heard me mentioning for a couple of years how the mouse was falling off and getting in the way and blah, 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 and wasn't really working well anymore. And he got me this wireless mouse and, for my birthday last year. And I really love it. I mean, I don't even use that computer that much anymore. I do use the trackpad on my laptop, but I have been thinking about plugging the mouse into the laptop when I'm going to be using it all day because you know what like using your little finger like that you know the the fine motor it just if you're using it so much it just becomes painful and annoying after a while and it is easier on your body to use to use the mouse depending on what you're doing but I I guess what I'm saying is I had a mouse 
It worked okay. I could have lived with it, but it really has improved my quality of life by getting that mouse. And I wouldn't have bought it on my own. So when Adam got yeah, it for me, well, it was I, awesome. I heard you and I saw it on Amazon and I just bought it. And it, I'm glad it works well. And we could link to that that product. I mean, it, yeah. if people need a wireless mouse, it is a good one. It, it is a good one. And we're not affiliated with that company. What you were saying about Amazon, and you said something before that these ads start to pop up on your computer screen. If you look up wireless mouse and you click on one, or even I think even if you don't, and you start to see ads on, if you start to become cognizant of the ads that are on your computer over the next few weeks, you'll see that wireless mouse pop back up because you showed the computer that that is something that you're interested in. And they think that the more often you see it, the more chances there is of you buying it. So it keeps popping up again and again and again. So if you haven't noticed that already, start to pay attention to that on your computer. Whatever it is that you look up, that starts to show up for you. The other thing that you got me with the wireless mouse was an iPhone stand. And it was like one of those little... That was little, pretty terrible. It, it's awful. Yeah. I don't even know why we still have it. It doesn't hold my my phone very well. It, it's like my phone's too top heavy on it. It doesn't stand up straight. That's the thing about buying things online. The reviews are sometimes really good, but the product itself actually sucks. And it looks good in the images and it sounds good when you read it or watch a video about it. And then when you actually get it, it doesn't hold up to the standards that you expected. It's actually quite disappointing. And my advice is to figure out if you like it very quickly and then do something about it because I felt bad telling Adam it wasn't amazing and I thought that maybe I was doing something wrong and didn't know how to work it properly. So I kept it for too long and then it was just too late to return and get another one and, and all those things. So if you are going to buy things online, you know, or if you are going to buy things in person, if you don't like it, do something about it quickly. If not, it's going to end up a waste of money yeah. in a drawer. Sorry about that one. That's okay. But then I did the same thing to myself because I bought a selfie light at actually a really famous bookstore. And Ugh, you're the queen of selfies. And, and, and you went out. I and invented a, selfies before selfies existed. I know. Tell that to the world because no one will believe you. In 2005, I would Here steal people's cameras and I would take selfies of myself. And then they would go home the next day and download their pictures and email me because we weren't really texting at the time. I think they would, you mean 1995. Like it was no, really long 2005. time ago. 2005. Oh, we did this way before that. Did I do See, that still? Yeah. I can't even remember. Yeah. Anyway, I That's remember when you more specific. <laughs> <laughs> more only forty. Yeah. Um, more specifically, you know, in two thousand and five to two thousand and seven, when we lived in Hong Kong, I would do that all the time: steal people's cameras, take a bunch of selfies. But the word selfie didn't exist yet that I knew of. Not and in the dictionary. It, is it in the dictionary? Or, or what's now? a dictionary? You mean on Google? Yeah, on on Google. I think we were still using dictionaries then. Yeah, they would just email me or find me at work and be like, what did so you, you do to my camera? Yeah, so you bought this oh, selfie right. light that just really wasn't that awesome. It didn't really do much, actually. The truth is, I've only tried to use it for other things. I haven't even really tried to use it for any selfies because I don't really take selfies anymore. Right. Maybe I should try, but regardless, I don't find the light on it too awesome. And maybe it's because I bought one for $20 and maybe I was supposed to buy one for 50 like if you're really going to like post on Instagram and post on your Facebook and use it for your business, maybe I just didn't spend enough. So sometimes getting the cheaper deal means cheaper quality. Well, I guess that's true that you get what you pay for in a lot of cases. All right. Another thing that we've bought most recently, I think people know that I don't really drink coffee, maybe a little one here and there, like once a month. But Adam has been enjoying coffee lately and... We found a huge difference when you have a good quality machine and good quality coffee. It just makes it so much more enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, it's partly because I'm spoiled because every summer I'm in Europe when I work and I just have espressos all the time. And when I come back here and I want to have coffee, it just didn't taste the taste same. Like <laughs> so I ended up getting this really nice coffee machine and it's a world of difference. And I really do like having it. But I know some of you are thinking that, why are you drinking coffee? You should be drinking tea. Coffee's not good for you. The reports are mixed. The reviews are mixed. The science behind coffee shows that it's good, that it's bad. It's very confusing. But if you want to get Dr. Gregor's take on tea versus coffee, we actually spoke to him about it on our podcast. And 
That was episode 206, so you could listen to him explain what he thinks about the benefits of tea versus the benefits of coffee. And uh, it was actually very interesting to hear what he had to say about it. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is a high-speed power blender. And we've talked about that a million times before. Banana and ice cream is something that my kids like to eat all the time. I throw chickpeas in there. I throw black beans in there. I throw navy beans in there. I throw spinach in there. You know, I, I am able to feed them almost anything that I want to when I'm making banana ice cream. So that is in reason alone, good reason to have a high-speed power blender. You don't need a high-speed power blender to make your regular smoothies or even puree soups and things like that. But if you are feeding somebody with a feeding tube or have children where you really need, or husbands or wives, where you really need to, you know, hide foods or things like that, or you just want to have a more enjoyable, smoother smoothie or smoother soup, I definitely recommend it. You can cook in there. It's crazy. Yeah, we go over all the high-speed blender stuff on episode 259, and that was a great episode. If that's something you're interested in and looking to make the purchase, there were some great tips that we shared and some recipes in episode 259. And of course, all these episodes we're talking about, we'll link to them in the show notes at plantrainers.com so you could check those out. So I'm not a very fancy, fancy person, but when I have something, I like it to be good. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about right here in this section is a good piece of jewelry. And I'm not talking about diamonds. I'm not talking about, I mean, every woman should have a nice diamond necklace, but um, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking more about something that you wear every day that has meaning to you. It, it could be a $5 necklace, $5 bracelet, or it could be a $300 bracelet or necklace, but find something that's meaningful to you. Last year, was it last year? I bought myself a mala for my birthday. I've had a couple of malas before. One I bought, it was like 20 bucks at a yoga show and it didn't really speak to me. I just really wanted one because I was teaching yoga and I lost it like within a few months. So that was gone. And I think it's because I just got it because I wanted one, not because it spoke to me at all. And then a friend of mine gave me one and it lasted about two years until we got a cat and I'd left it out so that the moon could come through the the window in the bathroom and shine on the on the stone on the mala and the cat saw it and pawed it and the whole thing smashed. So that was gone. And that kind of seemed to me like it was time for a different journey. And then I bought myself a really nice mala. I looked at a whole bunch. I looked at what spoke to me. I looked at the description behind it. And I ended up choosing one that I really did enjoy. And I wore it for a year. And then I was bike riding with the kids. And when I bent down, it got caught under the seat. So when I lifted up, the whole thing smashed and broke, which uh, maybe it said something about some kind of energy going on. But what I did was I sent it off to a woman who had actually made Adam's mala bracelets and she fixed it to me and I'm waiting for it in the mail right now and I ordered some bracelets to to match it and when it speaks to you and it's something that you want to wear on a regular basis you don't need to have a different necklace for every outfit you know having that one that makes you feel grounded that reminds you of somebody that reminds you of something that helps you stay true to your values that's what I think is really important you got me these three uh, bracelets that I wear every day and I love them and they just keep me grounded and centered. And every time I feel a little bit of stress coming on, I just give them a smell. And I know that's weird, but the rosewood and the tiger's eye together, I just, they make me feel a lot calmer. So I really like them. And I guess finding jewelry that, like you said, speaks to you, doesn't have to be expensive, but brings meaning and value to you is where you're really going to get the benefit from that kind of a thing. Uh, Yeah, I'd rather have one piece of meaningful or more expensive jewelry than a hundred thousand little ones. And I have both and I want to get rid of those hundred thousand little ones. Only I have an eight-year-old daughter, so I know that it'll, it'll come into use with her one day too. So talking about my daughter, talking about Jordan, let's get into kid stuff a little bit because I teach kids yoga and sometimes I do private lessons and I go into basements and I cannot walk there is I mean we have this one with our friends also like we our kids had a lot of toys and not saying that we cleaned up and were neat necessarily this is not about being cleaned up it could be cleaned up and you could still not find anywhere to walk because there are toys 
everywhere, you know, and then what's how, what kind of paint are those toys painted with and what kind of plastic and what kind of toxins are we bringing into the home? And is it necessary for kids to have that many toys or better quality toys? So a lot of people don't think about that, though. A lot of people think about, oh, I have kids. I got to keep them happy so that they're busy and so that I could do my thing and they could play. And so we just got to get toys for them. And then they pile it up and there's no real deep thought. You know, it's some kid's birthday. They're going to get a thousand presents. They're going to keep it all or... They're going to give some away to charity or, you know, people don't go through that thought process very often. But when you're thinking about kids and buying them toys or gifts, maybe try to think about getting them something that's a little more practical, something that they will actually use more than one time. And I know that recently, well, not so recently, we got them a trampoline last year a mini trampoline that we put in our basement and they used it for a little bit. Then they stopped for a long time. But now that they've been watching these American Ninja Warrior type shows, they started taking out the trampoline and using it in their little obstacle courses that they make in the basement. And it's a great tool to get them exercising and moving. And it's one that they have a lot of fun with. And another thing that we have in the basement were little mini hockey nets and Russ always liked to play with those. We used to play together and it's And when other kids come over. And when other kids come over you get they those get little to do mini too. sticks. Yeah. And a it's little fun. Ball. I mean yes, it's still plastic and it's not great for the environment. But you can't always think that way. But you but just it can't. also I just threw out one net and I'm ready to throw out the other net and he's ten. And he's had it from when he was two. And and now that he's 10, though, we got him a mini ping pong table for his birthday. We didn't get it. Someone else did. Right. And now that's a great toy. I don't, I don't know if you would call it a toy, but ping pong is a great sport that, again, you could play forever and get long-term use out of, and it's fun. And now that we've thrown out the, the nets, or I'm about to throw out the second net, tell everybody, because I don't know what it's called, what is he using for the nets now? He's using our workout equipment. Yeah, he's using an equalizer bar. It's called a Lebert bar. And it's a a yellow, sturdy piece of equipment that you could use for a full body workout. So it looks like if you know know what the gymnasts and they're on the high horse and they have their two hands holding down and they're able to lift up their legs, it's kind of like that. You could do all those different kinds of exercises. You could do like dips on. Yeah. Yeah, it's two bars that you put next to each other so that you could do dips on. And he uses them as his nets. There's no mesh or anything, but he uses them as his nets now. The other thing that our kids like at this age is the bop it. Mm. You know, um, something that is so easy to bring with on vacation. I'm bored. Take out the bop it. You could play outside. You could play inside. You could lower the volume on it. Again, not affiliated with the company, but it. It's a little bit more active than sitting on the couch. Not crazy active, but, you know, it gets them moving. It's something to do. Pop it to start. (laughs) And then going back to the trampoline, we got a smart TV in the basement so that we can watch Netflix while we run. And the kids will say sometimes, can we watch an episode of something on Netflix? And I'll say, great, go jump on the trampoline and watch at the same time. Yeah. Right? So... Like, yeah, their brain's getting fried from whatever kind of show they're watching, but at least they're jumping and their blood circulating throughout their body properly. So what we want to do now is we want to kind of get into a little bit more specific brands. At this point, anything that we mention now, we either have affiliate codes for or they are Plant Trainers products. And if you want to help support the podcast, of course, you can go to our website at planttrainers.com for some of the things that we're talking about. And we will also link in the show notes at planttrainers.com for some of the specific items that we're talking about. And that will help the podcast and help with all different kinds of costs that are associated with that. And like a bunch of already do, you could support us at patreon.com slash planttrainers and just contribute to the growth of this podcast. So what we're going to do is we will set up a $5 coupon for our store so that some of the products on the website, you can actually be gifted $5 off as because you are podcast listeners and we really do enjoy that. Um, do we know what the code for that is going to be in case they want to memorize it instead of go to the show notes? It can be PTP 2018. Okay, so PTP is Plant Trainers Podcast 2018. It's going to be your $5 thank you coupon. And some of those things that you can use it for are our t-shirts. Yep. We have our Propelled by Plants 
t-shirt. We talk about it all the time. It is Iron Man finisher material. It's UV protectant and it's really cool. And it starts a lot of conversations on races and after races. So that is a great gift for the holidays and snail mail will slow down people. So order it now. We also have our hashtag training for life shirts. Yeah. Right. So that's a cotton tee. And if somebody is not 100% plant-based or plant-based at all, but they are training for life, it works as a great present for them as well. So I don't want to go through all of our products because it's going to be an infomercial. But if you go to planttrainers.com slash shop and you can look through our workbooks, our eBooks, our recipe books, all of it will be eligible for a $5 off coupon and the code will be PTP2018 and you can use that there. I think that's fine, right? It is fine. We have our Yummy Foods activity book for kids that we've talked about as well. That coupon won't be good for for right. that because that's specifically through Amazon, but we really do think that it's a great you know, uh, inexpensive stocking stuffer or or gift if you have to give to a lot of different children in your life. We, we really do love that one. Two products that we want to mention and bring up again, there's no coupon for that. But if you are or have enjoyed Energy Bits before, please use Plant Trainers at checkout because that's going to help you get a little bit of an extra discount and it's going to help support the show as well. That's for energybits.com to get your energy bits. And also, of course, for Sigmatic Foods for your coffees, uh, mushroom coffees, you can use plant trainers at forsigmatic.com slash plant trainers. And of course, we'll put links to all these in the show notes. And if you want to know what those mushrooms do, then check out our Instagram or our podcast from last week, episode 277, because we get really into detail about mushrooms there. And that's it for everything today. I yeah, hope you have just, happy shopping. Hopefully you got some tips and some ways to help you and your family shop a little more consciously and be a little more efficient and effective in using your money towards getting gifts and special occasion items for your loved ones. And if you're looking to get us a gift, our favorite color is plant trainer screen. Mine's the blue. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast listening platforms. We appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it ensures other people will find us too. Thanks to our patrons. To become a patron, visit www.patreon.com slash plant trainers. Even supporting us with $1 really makes a difference. Connect and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Plant Trainers. Like Plant Trainers on Facebook, join our newsletter, and check out our website at www.planttrainers.com for awesome plant-based recipes and a list of our services. Email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so we can answer them on our upcoming Facebook Lives. We hope we've inspired you today. Join us again next time and have a healthy day.